Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Good to go. Good to go. No rustling or anything like that. No rustling, nothing like that. All right. Oh, after this. Right. John, back on the road again tomorrow. Um, I think it's our uh, third away game in a row. Um, some difficult fixtures, but again, going into this one, unbeaten confidence high and uh, the squad in a good place. Absolutely, you're right, yeah. Uh, three tough away games, Cove and then Stirling, and now Queen of the South. Yeah, but we've stood up to the challenge. Uh, the challenges keep coming and that's uh, that's life and it's, that's football. You just go on to the next game. We've done so well to to be in the position that we're in. The guys have been fantastic. Uh, again, attitude, mentality, uh, determination, hunger, um, will to win, all the, all the type of things that... Uh, you get from a team who are in a position that we're in. Uh, we obviously want to reinforce that position, even more so by getting uh, a win down at Dumfries. Never an easy place to go. They made it very difficult for us down there and actually out here. You know, Queen's have been a, a difficult opponent, albeit that we've won two and drawn one. Uh, I'm sure uh, Marvin will have them uh, well fired up for the game tomorrow. You know, they're in a little bit of a position that uh, they probably would like to be higher up the table. Getting a little bit nervy with regards to Annan picking up points uh, now and uh, Annan beating them last week. So we know what we've got to do. We've, uh, we've planned, prepared, and uh, we'll be ready for the you know, the game. It's obviously a later kickoff at 5 30. You know, so we, we've got to focus on ourselves. What we do is going to be uh, you know, most important. A team like Queen of the South, who have caused us problems already this season, um, kind of both home and away. Um, how do you how do you prepare for these kind of games um, going going back down there? What kind of things do you look at um, midweek in, in the run up to that? Well, let's be fair. In the part of the bus twice here, you know, uh, and so it's hard to break them down. But we've had about forty crosses, if no more than forty crosses, uh, in the two games, you know, uh, and that's fair enough, you know. Obviously. They know that worried about us putting the crosses in the box, but we've always managed to win, you know. And so, down at their place, they were a little bit more, you know, trying to win uh, rather than trying to like steal a result by, you know, parking the bus and maybe sneak a goal. But at their place, they 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 played fairly well, to be honest with you. So we've got to be prepared for that. The boys are fired up because we know that, you know, the winning line's not a million miles away. And we want to continue this run. So the guys have got a right steely determination about them, as they showed last week. So we've done our analysis. We see how Queens have been playing in the last couple of weeks. But sometimes it's a little bit false because everyone can raises their game to play against us, which is natural, which we, we understand. But sometimes it doesn't always what you see uh, when they play against, say, Annan, for example, and then still in the week before. It doesn't always materialise that that's going to happen against us. And of course, we play it a bit differently for everybody else. And when we put our game on uh, the opposition, then uh, that's when we're at our best and sometimes when they're most vulnerable. So we have played them three times, as you mentioned. They've went about a certain way playing out here, which just about got them a point. And they went a little bit different at home. So we probably, uh, I think, if I'm in their shoes, you know, draws are not really good, you know, I need to try and win, win a game. So, uh, it could well be that uh, they come out all guns blazing and we'll see what happens. <coughs> you, you spoke about teams up in their, their game against us and um, I think um, after after the Sterling game you mentioned that obviously every other team in the league wants to be the team to, to end the, the streak that you're currently on. Um, and maybe a few narrow wins the last few weeks, but it must be reassuring um, for yourself that the team have got that determination and ability to, to dig deep when it comes to tough games like that. Sometimes they're more rewarding, um, you know, scraping over the line and showing that mentality and no crumbling uh, to maybe a game where you've won 3 or 4 nil and you've actually, you know, when we win 3 or 4 nil, we'll have played some really, really outstanding football and we've scored more often than not good goals. 
but sometimes digging out results, you know, you get the same three, the same three points, uh, but it shows a different side and a way to win, so we have to find ways to win, and that's what all good teams do, it doesn't matter what level you're playing at. Uh, and the, and, the, and you know, the boys have showed that uh, numerous occasions, obviously, when we were sitting here unbeaten in the league, uh, eight games to go, you know, that, that tells you everything about the, the mentality and the attitude of the players, which has been outstanding, and we are going to try and keep that going, obviously. Going into the, the game on Saturday, um, I know obviously we've got um, almost a full complement of players going into the squad, but Tom Lang's obviously missed the last um, couple of games. Um, is he any need a, a return? Well, there's news on Tom. Obviously, he had been getting treatment and he had been getting rehabilitation and he was looking good. Uh, he joined in with a warm-up on Tuesday and then done some more work with with Cammy, the physiotherapist, in his rehab. He came back into training yesterday. Now, what's happened overnight is that his knees flared up again, unfortunately. And that can happen. It was always a case yesterday as, let's see how he responds to this now. Unfortunately, the knees flared up, so we'll need to get a scan, you know, ASAP, just to see if there's something going on there. Uh, so it's a blow. It's a blow for Tom. You know, he's been outstanding all season. Uh, so we're not going to get, jump to any conclusions. We need to get the scan and get the scan results and just take it from there. But it's, Liam Henderson's uh, went in. He's moved from midfield into the centre back position. We're well aware that he can go and play there. And uh, but to be fair to him, he's, he's stood up and be counted, and he's he's went and done the job, you know, extremely well, really, really well. Uh, so you know, we built the squad in a way that we need one or two versatile players. Well, we're going to have to always do that. We're never ever going to have you know enough budget to to be able to have like uh, perfect scenarios with two players that are equally as good in every single position in the team. So you need players who are versatile who can go and play. In this case, we, we Liam, he can play in midfield, he can go and play uh, centre-back and give us some net, natural left-sided balance on that side. And again, he could go and play in a left-back position. And at a push, he could probably play left wing. Uh, he played a few times there for, for Dick Campbell at Abro. So, you know, he's a, he's a versatile player. Uh, and he's done exceptionally well. So we've got no uh, issues with, with, with Liam playing there tomorrow. It's a blow for Tom, and we'll just need to get the scan results and see you know, where the treatment goes from there. Really important to have that versatility in the squad. Um, I know you mentioned, obviously, Liam Henderson is a, he is a centre-back by trade, and um, he, although he's played his football at centre, um, in the centre of the park this season, um, but probably a, a credit to, to his ability that he can drop into that defence seamlessly um, given how well they've performed this season because I think it's only 17 goals conceded in the league. Yeah, you're right. 17 goals, you're right. Second best in Scotland, only Rangers have got better. So, yeah, it's a credit to him. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he is. And we actually brought him in to be a centre-back. Uh, but such is life and things move on and things change at times. You know, we moved him at midfield. He's been an asset in there. He's got to sell some a number of goals over the two seasons, uh, and he's had to kind of like adapt and to develop himself. You know, within the way that we train and the way that we play, he's had to develop the, that skill uh, to be able to take the ball. He's, he's still got a bit to go. The guys playing in midfield and someone so tall, you know, uh, long legs. So it's difficult taking the ball in tight areas and getting the ball. So he'll always probably struggle a little bit, but he's getting better. And uh, for that point of view, that's all you can ask, you know. But he's went naturally back into centre back, and and at times he's oozing with class. So you know, hopefully we can do it again. Striker like Gavin Riley, he's going to challenge. He's going to bump him. These type of things we already have catered for. He'll probably drop in on occasions, but then he'll be running the channel in behind. So. He's quite a decent striker, uh, Gavin Riley. Uh, so, Queen's have been playing two or three different formations. It's a little bit of a toss of a coin as to what they're going to do tomorrow. But whatever, you know, Cole and uh, Hendo need to be prepared for, uh, you know, in particular, Gavin Riley. Um, just lastly, I'm probably looking like we'll take um, another really decent travel and support tomorrow. Um, and the the Kevin McAllister stand and the main stand as well actually um, very close to selling out for the rest of the season. Um, we're opening it to the North Stand as well. Certain games to fans. How crucial is that support going to be come this um, kind of last these last few weeks? Huge, but again a big, <coughs> a big uh, 
uh, thank you to all the fans that travelled up to Cove, who then, all right, I, mean, I know it's not so, so long a journey to get to Stirling, but we've got a long journey tomorrow down to Dumfries, you know, and we know there'll be big numbers there, you know, there'll be big numbers when, you know, maybe earlier in the season and maybe last season, and so finding ourselves in this situation, I'm sure the fans are going to be down there in huge numbers tomorrow. We'll have probably more fans than, you know, Falcon fans and there will be Queens fans probably. So yeah, it's a massive thank you. Uh yeah, we need you. We absolutely need you. Last week at Stirling, you know, you were as much uh you gave us the back end that probably got us a goal in the end, you know, late in the game by continuously supporting us and encouraging the team. Uh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Cannot be underestimated at all. So uh even in advance of going down, you know, uh, we thank uh, all the folk at fans for, for, for going down there tomorrow and uh, for the backing that you're going to give us. And hopefully we can return that by a good performance and, and winning the game. Here's hoping. John, thank you very much and all the best for tomorrow. Thank you. Right, thank you.